Um, okay, Survivor Series stuff here. So, show is Saturday. Uh, two War Games matches. The men's War Games match, the Bloodline versus the Brawling Brutes, Drew and Kevin Owens. I think people are way more interested in what, how how the finish happens and and what kicks off. I know that that's. I think the match is going to be really good no matter what. But how how Sammy, if Sammy's going to lose, if he's going to cause his team to lose, if there's going to be some trickery going on, like, like do you have any sense on where you think that they're going? Well, I mean, there's the. I think every direction's obvious. You know, it's like either Kevin and Sammy somehow end up okay and feud with the Usos. Um, you know, Sammy and and Jay cost them each other matches all the time, and obviously that's the direction that they're going. Um, I think that they're going to go. Um, I mean, it feels to me like they're going with Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens at the Rumble, so you've got to do something there. That's why I think. Roman should lose, but Roman never loses. I don't may, know. But, Roman, I, I, I don't know about Roman losing before um, the match before WrestleMania. But I mean, but it's it's not a title match, obviously. But if Sammy had done something accidental to cause him to lose uh, against because Ke- Kevin Owens, you know, no one's going to expect him to win at Royal Rumble either. But it would yeah. kind of be nice to get that thing going because I think the I think the fan reaction to Kevin Owens against Roman Reigns in 2022, after you know, because all the stuff that they did what a couple years ago was that all no fans. Um, yeah, yeah. It? I'm trying to remember with if they um, God, I don't remember the dates off the top of my head. I just remember with Paul Heyman trying to do that that thing that took forever and and on all that when they did that that weird finish yeah because oh, oh, owens i think he has a pretty unique uh relationship with, with the fan base the, he's you know he's not the top guy but the the fan base uh looks at him as as like right right there and maybe sort of deserving but they kind of know that he's not going to be there so i think it'll be an interesting reaction for that match but i would love to see a little juice behind it and if you know then you could even do roman against sammy at uh in, oh, in yeah. Montreal, the the next pay per view. Well, it also could be Roman and Kevin in Montreal. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. I mean that's that's very viable. Or you know, people have talked about you know Kevin and Sammy against the Usos in Montreal. Yeah, that's another. Do, I mean, or you could do that one at WrestleMania. And you could do Kevin and Sammy at WrestleMania too. You know, have have them do a WrestleMania match or Sammy and Jay. You know, but I mean, Kevin. I mean, um. But yeah, you could do Kevin and, and Sammy against the Usos at rest. You know, like, but, but I think Montreal was, you know, I think that they're going to do something big in Montreal with Kevin and Sammy in some form. Um, but they're, the the fact that they're going, that they had, um, um, you know, Kevin stun Roman. If it was going to be Montreal, I think that they wouldn't do it this early. I think that this that's, this feels more like Rumble, and they do need like, um, you know, they're doing a stadium show. And um, Roman's probably, you know, Roman's not going to be in the Rumble. So, um, you know, who else is there for mm-hmm. him to face? Mm-hmm. So so Kevin seems like the guy, you know, right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think it. I mean, I that's what I would do. Uh, then we have the Women's War Games match. Damage Control, Nikki Cross and Rhea against Bianca, Alexa, Asuka, Mia Yim, and now Becky Lynch, who was uh, on SmackDown tonight, and so it's official as, as fifth person. Yep, she was. Uh, she that was the beginning of the show. Interestingly, there was a Cal UCLA football game that went overtime, so a lot of people missed the beginning of that uh, of the show. So, uh, um, no, no. I mean, did they join it in progress, or did I, they just start it later? I from from what I saw on Twitter, right when that show started, people were saying that they missed the beginning. Wow! That's... So I don't know. I, I for for uh, for us or for for me for for, for, for for us, it's not an issue. Yeah, because we get it on the. I I don't I don't get the the five o'clock version. I get the eight eight o'clock. Yes, version. the same with me. I get the eight o'clock version too. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Becky makes this thing uh, a little bit bigger for sure. Uh, I I kind of like the thing that I'm looking forward to in this match is some of the programs that they could set up because Bianca against Rhea Ripley could be a, a really big match. Uh, and, and, well, and the, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure they're, that's what the, I'm sure they're going there. Yeah, and I, I would love to see some stuff happen. Like I want to see Rhea Ripley just look impressive I, I, in this match. I mean, I mean, I, 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 I expect Rhea Ripley is going to be the one who beats Bianca. 
I mean, I don't know that. I'm just would think that, especially now because Rhea Ripley's at her most over right now with this, um, you know, in the Judgment Day gimmick. By the way, did you see the um, the, the thing with Ray? <laughs> I saw uh, a little bit of it. Yeah, where he puts his yeah, mask yeah. on to answer the door. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought that was very well done. Yeah, yeah. You no, know, the, I mean, the the thing is the thing is working for sure. Yeah, yeah. And Ray and Dominic's another WrestleMania match in L.A. Most likely. Yeah, because they didn't they do uh, they did Ray and Eddie in a ladder match at at uh, last time WrestleMania was in L.A. Right. Oh, man, I don't even remember that. I wonder um, if they go back to a ladder match for that. Yeah. No, it's put, and interesting if they do Money in the Bank at WrestleMania or they do Money in the Bank as a separate pay-per-view this year. Well, Triple H said that thing about Hell in the Cell that he said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, they're going to – um, yeah. I mean, he's gonna. it's going to be his, his fingerprints now. By the so way, we'll, Ray, Ray and Eddie at WrestleMania was not a ladder match, but I, f- I feel like they did a ladder match maybe later that year. That was yeah, that happened. Yeah. Um, okay, so then, uh, yeah, so I, you know, I don't, I don't know what's. I think there's some intrigue with what happens with Alexa. There's been lots of teases and in, in commentary about her, so yep. that's also something to look out for. Um, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was. Uh, I'm, I was telling somebody the the other day, you know, if, if they hyped this thing up with this mystery partner, and it was Candice or or, or Beth, but, but, but can Candice wouldn't have worked the way the hype was. No, 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 no. But but if they if if it was like, oh, we're gonna do this presentation on SmackDown, like they would have been booed like uh, Rey Mysterio was booed at, in that one Royal Rumble when everyone oh, wanted when, to when anyone, anyone, when Danielson. <laughs> yeah, right, right, yeah. Okay, so then uh, we also have uh, Finn Balor and AJ Styles. And here's my question to you. When we watched Clash at the Castle, uh, Sheamus and uh, Gunther were allowed to do a different style of match than WWE style. Yes. Do you think Finn and AJ will do something resembling a New Japan style match, or do you think this would be this is going to be more of a WWE style match? I believe it would be more of a WWE style match. Ah, that's, that's, that's my thought. To me. That's a bummer yeah. because if it was a little bit more New Japan, I mean, this could be like, you know, not only match of the night, but like, you know, match of of uh, WWE for you know for the late part of this year but if if it's a uh, the wwe style match is gonna be good too but just you know i, I, know, I know you know it's like it's like the thing the thing is is we get so many incredible matches every week that you can't even keep up with it so it's it's almost like okay you know aj and finn balor if it was five years ago i would say that but it's like you know we see matches with guys like at the level of those guys now you know like constantly we're gonna see two of them on wednesday you know and think of you know uh you know different independent stuff and you know think about like when when you add Takeshita and bandito to to you know going against those top guys freaking jericho and ishii i mean i don't i mean i could just imagine who's, who's you know that, that match was phenomenal yeah um i mean i i was blown away by jericho and ishii i mean i thought it was one of the best um AEW matches of the year um, you know, singles matches anyway. Well, just yeah, it was one of the best. You know, I mean, it's not like the best, the best, the best, but um, if pretty you, close. If you had to vote today, what would be your match of the year? The match of the year, uh, Will Osprey and Okada in um, G One would be my match of the year. And the reason I say that is because I thought it was going to be Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi. And then when G1 was over, almost nobody voted for Will Ospreay and Shingo Takagi. <laughs> and everybody voted for um, Will Ospreay and Okada. Um, and their, you know, their Tokyo Dome match was right up there as well. Yeah, and, uh, and I think setting is, is going to matter. Like these ma- like you're saying, we have all these really good matches on, on Dynamite. I, I think that when they're on the pay-per-view stage, they're just remembered a little bit more. They absolutely are. Um, it's like Jericho and Ishii's probably not going to get votes for match of the year because it wasn't on pay-per-view. Um, and these best of seven matches probably won't. And I, you know, um, I think, um, you know, like, um, well, you know, the one that probably would be hurt um, is, is that uh, Will Ospreay and um, Mike Loku match because it was in rev pro. Yeah. But, but to me, like, for a certain style, if you're a fan of 80s wrestling or 70s, and even more 70s wrestling, um, that would be the match of the year for that style. You know, that match was just incredible. But, 
if you're a ma- you know a fan of 2022 wrestling, you know maybe you would go with um, you know Will Ospreay and uh, Okada. I mean, this could be a year. In fact, I saw you know this could be a year unless like you know again voting can be you know weird. You know, like like sometimes guys have all these great matches and they work against them because there's so many and their their votes kind of get split around. And Osprey has so many matches of the year this year that it could. Um, you know that, that he that, could be splitting votes against himself. He could be splitting votes against himself, and also some of his matches that would be, you know, probably other people's matches. Just because you know, like Gunther and Sheamus, who, like, if you're going to vote for a WWE match for match of the year, you know, it's Gunther and Sheamus or Cody and and Seth. The okay, that was the other one I wanted to ask you about, though, because I think because we have so many great technical wrestling matches. I think the ones that are going to stand out a little bit, just a little bit more, are the ones that also uh, tell a really good story and get like the emotional aspect out, which is the the G one matches because of G one and how long the the tournament is and and how these guys are, are able to keep it up all the way through the end. Like that stuff matters. That's a that's real emotion. You get behind those guys. And same with Cody. Like that was real emotion in oh, that yeah. wrestling match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was um, when that match was over. I thought that it would, it would, it would be a very high placer, um, and it and it still may. But there's, you know, there's so many good matches. Um, you know, I mean, that's the one thing is, is boy, are we spoiled when it comes to good matches? Because again, you know, like I could go back and watch one of these matches of the year from twenty years ago, and and it's and there's and they're still going to be great. Don't get me wrong, but I mean, you know, I and I've done that, and I'll go like, oh man, this match is great, but. Have I seen 30 matches this year better? And it's like, yes, I've seen 30 matches this year better. Um, in some cases, more than 30. Um, it's, just, it's just a natural evolution of the business, you know, that, you know, the way people study and 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 everything like that. So, um, and, you know, especially then you have these guys schedule wise, you know, because of the nature of the schedules, you can do much better matches, which is a curse in a lot of ways because, you know, I always thought like part of the art form was to be like Ric Flair in the sense that you can do it 300 nights a year. And and what Will Ospreay does, um, you know, you could not do 300 nights a year. You know, what Okada does in big matches, you could not do. You, you couldn't do it. You, you just the body would not hold up. So it's what Bret Hart did. You know, yeah, Bret Hart did work 300 ma- matches a year and Shawn Michaels did, too. Um well, Bret did. I mean, well, Shawn did when he was younger, too. But I mean, the whole thing is, 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 is um. You know, but this style, you know, the, the 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 good and the bad of it. The good is is that you get a lot of time off and you don't do as many matches. Um, the bad is is because you have a lot of time off, you mentally go and have that that freaking, you know, again what we learned in all Japan. You know, with with you know, I remember Doug Furness, you know, was a very good friend of mine. Used to always talk about how, I mean, the great thing about all Japan is is you just go gung ho every night because you know. On a, you know, at the end of the tour, you're going to have three weeks off to rest. So you go in there and then the last night of Budokan, you got three weeks off. So you go out there and give everything you got. It's not like you got a, you're doing a pay-per-view and then you've got a house show the next day. Like it, like if it was WCW or WWF at the time. Mm-hmm. But what we learned with all Japan is that that mentality with more time off, but that thing in the back of your head that like, oh, you know, I can rest up. Those guys ended up doing way, 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 way too much. And, you know, they did not have the longevity of the guys who did 300 matches a year because those guys had to learn a style that they could do every night. And the other guys got so carried away on the fact I got three weeks off to heal up that they did stuff that that ended up shortening their careers. So, and I mean, it's funny because with AEW, I mean, when I've talked to some of the guys there, like they're doing less matching than they've ever done before, but they're getting hurt and they're hurting because they're doing so much because of that mentality when they're in this, in, in this match. Hey, I don't got another match for a week. It's not like I got to do it, you know, four times this week. Um, like, like, you know, many of them did when they were in other promotions or when they were doing independence. All right. And then um, Seth Rollins against Bobby Lashley and Austin theory. Seth is so good at his character right now, but I, I don't know. This one doesn't feel too hot to me. Uh, you know, I think we've seen so much of it on Raw. 
um, with the same stuff and theory. You know, they're really trying to make theory. And, and, you know, I don't know if the people are fully behind the idea of theory's a top guy, but, uh, you know, I mean, that's the goal is to get him there. And You think and he's going to win? Theory? Um, do you think he's going to win? I think Seth should win. Um, yeah. Um, but I, but it's possible. It's possible that he'll win. And then Ronda and Shotzi. Which... Did you see that Ronda's 40, 40 to 1 favorite? <laughs> Someone in WWE Creative could uh, win a lot of money. They could win a lot of money on 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 that one if they, uh, yeah. But nobody believes that Shotzi should win, nor should she win. You know, it's just a just a way to get Ronda on the show and and give Ronda a win. I mean, it's, I was I like I was like, gosh, you know, why is Sh- the Shotzi in this match? And then I just thought back, I was like, oh yeah, Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, Naomi, all not wrestling. Well, Becky's back, but it makes sense why the there's depth issues on that side. Well. You know, and 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 again, Natalia's hurt, and um, I don't know when. You know, Charlotte was supposed to come back in the summer, and here we are, November. So um, I don't know. Like I, I keep expecting on every pay per view, her to run in and and you know and do something impactful, and it, it still hasn't happened. Yep. Yep. What part do you love about this job, Granny? Nothing. When you when you irritate me, <laughs> you make me mad. I. I guess seeing seeing you guys when you week. needle me, quit yeah. talking over me. Sorry. If Granny, this person asks, could leave only one thing in her will for Brian, <laughs> <laughs> what would it be? <laughs> Rufus versus Roman Reigns, 2016. Rufus, Rufus on barricade. Rufus comes back, drops. Reigns on the top rope. <laughs> Rufus has a temper tantrum because only two count. Do you know that we put a clip of you on the internet last week? And these people I'm... on the internet are so dumb that they thought that we hired an actor to play you. No. Mm-hmm. Huh? Eh, forget yeah. about it. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of the Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.